Just my name's Steven. Today we'll be going over the Playmates Con from Skull Island. Now, it's kind of funny that it's actually a con figure. I was kind of expecting these to be all Godzilla figures and then just uh, variations, but he gets his own toy line. He even has different imaging on the packaging, which is kind of neat. <laughs> I gotta say. I uh, just recently reviewed the 2004 Godzilla, so if you guys haven't checked that out, card at the top. Decided to start with that one first because I feel like that one's a little bit easier to critique. While this one, you don't see much stuff come out for Kong and even Skull Island because you pretty much just had the old Lantern figures. Uh, there's the X Pluses, but like 20 bucks to 100. 30 it's kind of hard. <laughs> 130 and up like it's kind of hard to really compare you know uh but for the most part for the price point this guy being about 20 bucks definitely we got something to go along with it and just for like stateside fans there's just not much for our favorite giant gorilla uh but anyways uh we're just gonna get into it uh speaking of this is the 11 inch version there is a smaller version of the skull island call that isn't roaring so it's a little bit more basic of a pose and i kind of like this one to begin with, just because it's got a little bit more going on with it than just the static look. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, for the packaging, it is different than the Godzilla one where you get the tropical backgrounds. You get an image of the figure in the back, which is kind of cool. Uh, I got Colin Skull on the bottom, some Playmates. No anniversary, like, like the big gold Godzilla logo like we had on the side here. So that's different. More Colin on the sides. And then on the back, just the image from... Pretty much like a lot of the uh, movie illustrations you've seen that has a little bit of a description here on the side with a scientific expedition to an uncharted island awakens titanic forces of nature a mission of discovery becomes an explosive war between monster and man with some legal bubble jump on the bottom and literally nothing on the official bottom of the box but anyways let's get him open up out of his cardboard prison all right so now we got Colin open up out of his cardboard prison first and foremost he has no attachments so you don't have to insert a tail or nothing into that took us. Uh, but one thing I want to start with pointing out with the details is he does have some unsightly screw holes in the back. Now that's just kind of a plastic problem, if you will. Like they're going to be continuing using plastic on these. If there's not any way of covering the plastic holes, like say on the Godzilla 2004, which still sitting on my floor, I'm assuming the plastic, the screw holes are probably buried underneath the dorsal spines here because these are a different material. And that's probably where the screw holes ended up for this guy. While this one, um, there's no way to really cover them up without just molding over top of them. So it's going to have like the same problems that we've been seeing with like the Jack specific Godzilla figures and stuff like that. Um, so it's just one thing I want to point out. But for the most part, like if you're going to be buying this for display purposes, you're going to be having it from the front anyways. So... Is it a big deal? Probably not. If they make a skull crawler, I could see that being worse, though. <sighs> I hope they make a skull crawler, though. That'd be kind of dope. Probably not in this scale, though. Like, if I, I would imagine if they make one, they probably make one for a smaller one. Would be cool, though. Would be cool, just saying. Um, but like I, said, I don't think that was in any of the leaked stuff we've seen. i uh, looking through the uh, the um, the SKUs, anyways. The, the only con stuff they were mentioning was mainly for uh, Skull Island and the 33. Uh, but anyways, for the head sculpt, looks pretty nice. I kind of like the roaring expression. I like the detailing. It's pretty solid. Like, even for the fuzz, there's quite a bit of uh, ingrain detailing. Face looks pretty good. Eyes are a blood red color with some black for the pupils. Teeth are done in a fleshy color uh, with some red on the inside for the tons. And on the roof of the mouth. This is something we didn't see on the Godzilla. Now, is the paint job very uh, movie accurate? That's debatable, and by debatable, I mean, no. <laughs> but it's still a pretty cool looking con. You even get the ears on the side here, a little bit of black. Uh, moving down the chest area, you get this slash on the front of him to show off some of the damage he's gotten. Uh, only one slash, though, which I thought he had like some damage on his arms and stuff, so that might have been kind of cool to convey. Uh, but definitely he has a lot of muscle definition on the front with his... Uh, Packs there, get some, well, it appears to be a six pack. A little bit of belly button action going on there as well. Fuzz on the stomach is definitely faded though. Uh, for the most part, for the plastic sections, the detailing is not quite as crisp as it could be, which is odd because, like, the arms are uh, plastic, but like 
for the most part, like the detailing holds up pretty well, like especially when compared to the side of the head. And same with the back, like the back fuzz looks pretty good, which is weird because there's pickles back here. So you think if they were gonna uh, cheap out the detailing a little bit, it'd be on the back section here. As you can see, like with the legs, like once you get towards the joint area, doesn't show off very well. Um, and same with on the sides here too, uh, for the connecting pieces of the plastic. But like, front of the legs, looks pretty nicely detailed with the fuzz. But like the stomach, they decided to skimp on on a little bit. And it's weird. It's just kind of weird to me. I guess it's like, because there's skin and that's folding in, so you wouldn't see much of the fuzz anyways. But i just not a big fan of that. But I think as like a total package, he doesn't look too bad from the front anyways. And the, the roaring expression kind of gives him a little bit more character. But then again, we have been seeing that a lot with cone figures as of late anyways. So, yeah, it's debatable. Might have been kind of cool if he came with an accessory, though, because uh, for his hands, he comes with a clenched fist with uh, some black paint for the fingers. Uh, same with on the hands here as well. Uh, but his hand's a little bit open on the inside, so it might have been kind of cool if you maybe could have had, like, a plane to hold on to or just, like, something, uh, something other than just air. Because, like, Godzilla, like... While didn't come with a accessory, if you will, still has the tail section and definitely has a lot more plastic going on. Um, so it would be maybe kind of cool, if, like instead of the tail, <laughs> he could have had um, something to at least like grip onto, even like a tree. A tree would have been sweet because then he could replicate him, try and give guys all his vegetables. Uh, moving down the legs, though, pretty basic pose uh, for the feet. Got his five toes which are also done in a black color. And you also get paint job on the bottom, which is uh, something I wasn't quite expecting to see. Uh, but for the most part, pretty standard looking Kong. Uh, just this very basic pose, arms bending a little bit. So you can kind of get them like in the rock'em sock'em robot poses. But for the most part, like articulation wise, you're not gonna be really getting him in anything super dynamic. Cause for his articulation, his head could look to left, to the right. Now, uh, eh, okay, you can't actually go all the way around. Felt like it wasn't gonna let me go this way, but it you can, but be forewarned, you might wear some of the plastic if you do that too often. Arms can go all the way around. A little bit of rotation here at the hands, at the, nothing at the waist. And then legs can go forward and back, pretty much all the way around. And at the feet, can rotate side to side as well. And for quick comparisons, I'll be using these for both of the Playmates videos. But uh, here we have the 11-inch Con and Godzilla together. And looks pretty solid. Like, I kind of like this actually as a pair. You think they would have made the 2014 to go with him? But... Eh, it was whatever. Hey, here's some stateside Kong figures with the Leonard Kong and the McFarlane Monster Classics King Kong. Hey, here's some articulated Kong figures with the Mezco Kong and the SH Monster Arts King Kong. Hey, here's some Trim Master Godzilla 1998 figures with the Nuclear Strike Zilla and the Living Zilla. Hey, here's next to some NECA figures with the 1962 Godzilla and the Pacific Grim Leatherback. So overall, for the Playmates Skull Island Kong, this thing's pretty decent. Of uh, the detailing hit and miss, it's not quite accurate for the Skull Island Kong, but for the most part, it still conveys the monster on your shelf. If you're buying this for collecting purposes, it's probably one of the better stateside ones we've gotten recently, or lately, and pretty much for any of the Skull Island stuff, because you only really have the giant Kong, which is cool. But it's giant. <laughs> and it does take up a lot of shelf space. While this one doesn't command as much of the space as some of the other figures. It is only like five bucks cheaper than that Kong was though originally. So it's a tough one. Like if you definitely like larger figures, go with the lantern. But uh for the most part, I think this one does okay. And for what I see, I like this version better than the small one. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see once uh we're able to acquire that one to really compare them. But for the most part, uh, if you don't really need a con in your collection, this is an easy pass. If you're looking just for a really good con, I definitely would recommend either the Mezco is a pretty inexpensive one to get. Well, inexpensive, I was like, it's 40-ish bucks. Uh, or even the old McFarlane one, especially if you like the original con film. Well, this one's more definitely geared towards kids, especially if it's durability. Like, if your kids really like Skull Island, this is probably the best one to get for them. And to be honest, it works better with the Lantern figures, I think, more so than the big one. 
Um, not quite as good. Like the smallest one probably is the best one for the lanterns for play purposes. Um, but this one's still a pretty solid bet. But what do you guys think? If you guys picked up this figure, what's your favorite playmate so far? Of course, comment, go just more thing. Please let us know in the comments. We also have a Patreon, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. You guys like to keep up to date with channel and donate. We'd greatly appreciate it. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting the like button, subscribe, and come to today. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.